Good morning, everybody. Welcome to 50 Question Friday for September 11th of 2020. Uh, good to see everybody here. Um, fantastic. We got quite a few people on today. Um, haven't been on for a couple of weeks, probably three weeks now. Um, I've been growing my hair out since then because I got a big gash on the back of my head. Got the big, huge reset uh, that I was looking for, so that's been fantastic. Um, God, I hope everybody here is doing good. It's been an amazing time for resets for everybody. There's been a lot going on in the world um, personally with people, and it's, you know, some of it kind of is not too fun, but, you know, if you step back, it's it's all a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, so anyway... You guys are welcome to put up your questions here. I have a lot of questions on the phone, but you know, I'm a little late getting in here today. It's been hectic. Um, so this will be the only 50 question Friday that we're doing for September, just because, um, gosh, September we're double booked on a lot of holistic fairs and everything on the weekends, um, all over the country. So it's September is a busy month. Um, Let's see. Hey, there's Samson. I'm supposed to be in Colorado here, too, to help Samson out with a fair coming up this weekend. Not going to be able to make it, Samson. Um, I will be in Casper, Wyoming for a fair. Uh, so just uh, seeing everybody else who's on here this morning. Good morning, everybody. I tell you what, before I start scrolling through the phone here to find all of our 50 questions that are coming in, let's uh, go into the heart space real quick. So usually when we start our webinars, we'll do the Trinity breath, which is just taking the three breaths into the heart, moving our consciousness from here to the heart, grounding into earth, connecting to creation, um, and just being solid column of light grounded, connected, and in the heart. So here we go. Simple three breaths. Close your eyes if you wish. Put your attention onto your physical heart. That is where you carry your light, your soul's fire. So simply visualize your light within your heart, connecting your light to the heart of Mother Earth, to that crystal sun of Gaia, taking in that deep breath, Breathing in that unconditional loving energy of the earth up through your feet and right into your heart. Next, we're going to connect to source, soul, creator, God. Breathe in that energy of creation into the heart. The third breath is basically breathing in the energy of earth and sky. Bring them both together within you, within the heart. Mixing them together and sending them straight back out so you are grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right, so I'm going to start answering some questions from email here first. So let's see, this one comes from Lucas. Um, does the regular small ring, the STU or sacred qubit, transform bad energies, for example, mobile phone, etc.? Um, so any working tensor ring, the tensor field itself will restructure water. It will restructure all basic electromagnetics. Um, so tensor fields on their own, doesn't matter the frequency, will still restructure electromagnetics. Now the STU, um, the standard two to a con unit that we use in the harmony ring, that one is just a higher frequency, more encompassing um, than the sacred qubit. So the STU, the, the standard two to a con unit that we make the harmony rings from, will do a better job at transforming electromagnetics than the sacred qubit. The golden fire rings, though, are absolutely the best at transforming electromagnetics. They will even work with the 5G millimeter wave, as well as dense consciousness and all kinds of stuff. So really, the golden fire would be the way to go for the best transformation of electromagnetics. And then um, Lucas is also asking, or within the column of the ring, 
Okay, so let me let me under, make sure that I understand the question. So to me, it sounds like the question is asking about if these will transform electromagnetics only within the column of energy or if they transform outside of the ring. Only within the column of energy will these have the transformational field. That's where you find the tensor field is within the column of the ring. Now, when you make the different geometries like the tensor field generators or the Gaia spheres, then they will be shining out more like a sunshine to be more encompassing. Um, let's see, and let's find another one of the questions for today on email. Has anyone tested gold plating for the infinite light pendant? No, you know, we have not jumped into electroplating gold. We, I mean, I tried it in the very beginning when I got the electroplating equipment, gold and silver, but no, we're not even going to start electroplating gold and silver. Um, basically, when Slim was electroplating the rings with gold and silver, he was looking for subtle ways to change the energetics of the ring because at the time he was not did not know about or was working with the etheric templates, which is where we do the true additions, changings um, of, of the energetics of the ring is in the etheric, not here on the physical through electroplating or any other kind of physical manipulation. It's all energetic. Um, so as far as electroplating, the silver infinite light pendant no we certainly wouldn't but that is something that at any time that any customer orders any of our tools they can take them in to be electroplated and it certainly will not do any harm to them and it does bring through other subtle energetics all right this might be the last question um Okay, yeah, this is a really super long and in-depth question, so we won't probably be answering that one here this morning. Um, okay, so here's a question. If vaccines became mandatory, would placing it in a sacred fire generator transmute it, and how much time would be needed? So, you know, Throughout the years with like our, my daughter, who's 10, um, we've been able to go through and if she's ever needed any kind of medication, supplements, whatever it is, um, shots, we go through and we're able to actually run energy into it, the unconditional love, run energy into that medication or supplement and change it energetically. And again, everything is energetically first, then it manifests into the physical. So we're able to change the energetics of these um, vaccines. And um, yes, you can totally use a golden fire generator and any of the tools to do the work, um, but we just simply do it ourselves. We do it through consciousness, simply going into the heart space, running a bubble of unconditional love with that medication, and changing it, um, completely changing the energetics of it. And then once you change the energetics of something, then that begins to alter how it works physiologically. But truly, um, you know, for a lot of these, um, these pharmaceuticals, it's not necessarily the physiological that is causing so many issues versus the energetic. Um, so like when my dad was alive and he was having to take a lot of different pharmaceuticals, well, tried to, um, it was always the energetic imprints, the energetics that came with those pharmaceuticals that was doing so much harm to him. The physiological part was actually a beneficial thing for him in the most cases. Um, so yeah, totally, we can change. We can change vaccines. We can change all that stuff. We only found one thing throughout our entire course that we couldn't change, and that was um, a nebulizer medication. The only thing that we can never change to where it then muscle tested or kinesiology or testing that it is then beneficial. Um, otherwise, everything that we've changed for my daughter, we've changed into something beneficial except for a nebulizer for some reason. Um, anyway, and then uh, please do drop some your questions here on the question side and 
we will start there because I believe we are through the questions online. All right. Let's see. Start here at the top. Uh, Jill, what exactly is a straight line qubit? 333 megahertz um, is supposedly the only one according to qubit website. Actually, if you go to our sacredmajors.com website, um, it'll, it'll walk you through. We have separated between measurements that work for tensor rings, measurements that work for only straight line frequencies, and then those that work for both. So like Jill mentioned, the 333 megahertz. The 333 megahertz um, is that one that you can cut a rod in a straight line and it'll produce a frequency. And then you can also bring it together and it produces a frequency, um, a, a tensor field. So that's the same with the STU, the standard 202 econ unit. The length of these wands is the STU, that standard 202 econ unit that makes the harmony ring. With this straight line qubit measure it is simply, um, it's creating an energy field on its own that we're able to anchor in that etheric template of the golden light wand into this particular length, the STU. Then you can take that STU and you can turn it into a ring, into a tensor ring, and it is producing a working tensor field. So the straight line qubit measures, um, to kind of give you a better idea of this, one of the, the first discoveries of the straight line qubit measures was by Douglas Benjamin in the Great Pyramids. And what he discovered was he discovered that there was this qubit measure above the king's chamber that was like 25.0 some inches long. Well, you break that down into um, 8.3 inches, three of them, and 8.3 8 inches is the sine wave of the hydrogen atom. So that 25 inches produces these 8.3 inch sine waves of the hydrogen atom frequency within it. So that's kind of how a straight line qubit also functions is based on sine waves, kind of like a ham radio antenna. But um, not all tensor rings qubit measures will make a straight line qubit measure and all straight line qubit measures don't make tensor rings. Plus straight line qubit measures can be hijacked unless there is an etheric template dropped into them. So working with straight line qubit measures, um, you know, you got to be pretty energetically sound when you start working with straight line qubit measures because they can be, there's no safety mechanism with them. They can be used for both beneficial and non-beneficial purposes unless that etheric template is anchored into them. Um, Robert, I just realized I might have black mold in my apartment. While waiting for an inspector and cleaning up tools, what might you recommend for protecting my body and removing mold energetics? So truly, mold is consciousness. It is a field of consciousness. Um, and it is in a lower vibrating state. So truly, if you can raise the frequency and vibration of you, of your home, of the surroundings, and of the black mold, you know, that may be something you can try. And um, so, so yeah, just basically raising frequency and vibration. Um, so any of the tools or, or any of the, um, the meditations, things like that, any of that is going to help with raising your frequency and vibration. Um, and then to just like anything out there, we need to stay out of fear of the things because when we start to be in fear and worry, we attract more of that as we all know. So, um, but I'm not going to give you any more advice than that on this subject because that's a touchy subject. I say get the heck out of there, but I understand um, frequency and vibration though. So just raise the energetics. Um, Let's see, so then Jill asks about, um, uh, some, she's, uh, Jill is asking about the Book of Stones with Robert Sims um, and asking a specific question about beans, crystal beans in there, and I cannot answer that question, Jill. It's been a long time since I read that book, so I'm not sure about the crystal beans she's um, referring to. Uh, so let's see, Linda, been sleeping with the 26-inch regeneration ring, which has been interesting. 
How far does the field extend? Does it go through the house, across the street? How does the field affect the items it goes through? Okay, so when you're sleeping in front of, let's just say this is the 26 inch regeneration ring. Um, when you have a ring, um, any ring actually, this column of light will go for miles. So wherever this column is pointed, it is bringing through that light. What it does, um, especially that regeneration ring, is we're seeing that regeneration ring field as raising the frequency and vibration of the physical, that we're seeing it actually raising the, the spin rate of the physical cells, and that is causing them to raise in frequency and vibration, transforming and dropping dense energies that are stuck, that are part of those physical cells, that are of a lower vibrating physical um so it raises physical up in frequency and vibration but as it is doing that it is also working with our light and it is bringing in our light more um and so does it matter if it's going through crystals people plants whatever it's going through it is making a positive impact um on everything that it touches uh, Ethan's asking, getting the infinity light pendant today in the mail. I've seen an orb by wearing it and I'm fully in this orb. Any tips you can share with me? So the infinite light pendant, oh, mine's sitting around the corner. Um, the, the silver infinite light pendant, it is going to bring through phenomenal things for individually for each person. Um, so Ethan, um, you see that orb and you're fully in that orb when when you're wearing that infant light pendant and that's fantastic um and that's not you know every like i say everybody is individual on what they're presented and what occurs with them um but as far as using that orb um you know i'd say do start working with that eighth and um try to move it try to hold it over another person or a plant or an animal um, you know, and we're starting to do energy work. It's really fun to pick out, like, um, find a row of trees or a row of plants, um, shrubs, bushes, annuals, whatever, and pick out one out of a bunch of them and every day do your work with that one and see over the course of a year, months and how it compares to the rest of them there. Um, and I think you'd find that kind of interesting, especially if you just happen to have, you know, a row of trees out your kitchen window that you go to every day to wash dishes. Maybe perhaps at that time you do the work with one and just see how it shifts and changes. It's just always a fun experiment. Um, Samson, with the silver water ring, what do you suggest would be better, the golden fire or the regeneration for spring water or any water you know i really am not a fan of the regeneration silver ring by itself i like it a lot with the golden fire ring but if you're going to get one silver ring totally the golden fire um, would be the way to go um, that golden fire ring it, it is a it's a heavier gauge it's a little bit larger ring but just because it's the golden fire that is what I would suggest working with the water um, first and foremost is the golden fire. But the regeneration added to that golden fire field is pretty phenomenal too. But really, um, yeah, silver water ring, golden fire for sure. How to, enter, how to introduce your instrument, instruments to a college student with no background or understanding? Hmm, well, depends on what they get into, I guess, Lynn. If, uh, if you introduce it as, hey, this is just good energy, you know, and let them go from there. Um, or else if you need to um, say, hey, these are based on scientific theories that um, are proven through experiential data. I don't know. Um, basically, you can you can go down, you know, the whole thing that it's a science base, that everything's cut to certain measurements that they produce a tensor field that these tensor fields restructure, harmonize electromagnetics and other energy fields because everything is energy. Um, yeah, I'm not sure the best and easiest way, Lynn, to 
to describe the tools to acknowledge to it really depends person to specific because when i'm out talking um at holistic fairs let's say every time i give an explanation for anything it is always very much you know channeled individually for each person to receive that information um yeah so anyway just depends on the person i guess um let's see over here in chat we have um some stuff going on here i'll let you guys chat and work on things there um all right and cnon oh yes so cnon i have a email from you for almost three months ago that I need to answer. Oh my goodness, my sincere apologies. It's, I really need to find a full-time personal assistant to take care of all those transactions that I can't keep track of, all the social medias and emails. We already have three people on all that stuff, but I just, yeah. So, and again, my apologies for missing all this. Uh, so would I talk more about steel products? So basically the key pendants and the wings of talk again i'm looking for the tools i don't have here the key pendants and the wings of talk are made out of steel and then we electroplate them copper um, because that particular geometry of the starburst or the um, un talk the key pendant copper nor brass will hold the energetics so we're using steel rods to hold the energetics of that starburst and that key pendant, and then we electroplate them. Um, couldn't tell you anything else more really about it because we haven't looked into anything else. And of course, when we make the tools, it's not like you're sitting there with the energetics of the steel and you know, and you have to think about the energetics of the steel and all that. No, because the steel is simply a space holder. It's not like it's radiating out. It's its energetics and its field it is being a space holder for us um let's see in one of the past 50, 50 questions friday you were wearing a silver quantum healers oh yeah the silver quantum healers you guys i know we have not got them out yet um i'm hoping this weekend that we do release the silver quantum healers um we've just been so flipping busy that we want to be able to get ahead on these and so we're finally done with the time studies we are really close to getting the website finished up the web page finished up for these um so i'm guessing that by monday or over this weekend you'll receive an email and there will be the news about the new silver quantum healers um Let's see, and then Sinan, do you make steel wands? No, you know, we've only, no, we don't make steel wands. Um, for the golden fire and light wand, the brass is, is, is the metal for these guys. That's just what feels the best. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about a steel wand. Um, interesting concept and definitely something to think about for sure. Um, seen on whether to you know whether to pursue steel wands or not um it's a thought and we can certainly have that that discussion too um all right so that was a pretty quick 50 questions you guys um let me see if there's anything else uh to talk about let's see the we do have a few product webinars that we haven't done yet such as you know all the new pyramid stuff and the quantum healers um you know the the the, the grid point pyramids a lot of that stuff we have not um still kind of been waiting to get one more feedback from the field and seeing on you know how everybody is using the quantum grid points um and people's experiences with them and again please do check out our testimonials page um, you know because you can get a lot of inspiration and ideas there too on how people are using the different products but the um, we'll be doing those those webinars product webinars at some time here in the future um, let's see what else we have a 
a few different talks and presentations coming out here. Um, one with you wealth coming up. Um, I think we got one with Loren Gailey that just came out. Then, a, then there's some stuff here coming up in October too. And then um, we're doing a lot of regional holistic fairs right now, um, everywhere from Colorado, uh, Wyoming, here in South Dakota, all over the state. So if um, yeah, if anybody is in the region here, um, let's see. And Jill, yes, we did answer your questions here. So please do check the replay, and you'll find the the answer to your questions here. Um, let's see. And then John's asking, do we have groups doing collective focus using the tools? So that's really a pretty good idea. Um, there is about the person who is doing the most collective focus with the tools is Ken Graydon with Healing the Handbook. He's out of Australia. Now, Ken Graydon, he does processes. Man, this book is phenomenal. You just walk through simple, simple processes like fascia unwinding process. That's the one I should be doing. I connect with the creator, the source of all healing. I accept blessings for all of creation. My intention is to change the past and bring rejuvenation into my connective tissue fascia. I start the process of fascia unwinding layer by layer, unwinding the vortices, spinning them backwards in space and time. So basically, processes. You go through this little quick process, usually never more than a page long, and um, these guys, uh, Ken Graydon, is using these processes in conjunction with the tools. And so Ken has actually made, um, gosh, he makes these laminated sheets that basically it's kind of like a radionic circuit board in a way, but it's a thuric to where you'll put the um, a regeneration ring because, uh, you know, Ken loves using the regeneration rings and the processes. And so you'll put the regeneration ring down onto this laminated paper. Um, phenomenal stuff. So anyway, Ken Graydon out of Australia, Healing the Handbook, is one person who's doing a lot of work with the tools, and they also do some of the collective focus things. But no, there is actually not a, a, a single group out there that's totally dedicated to using at least the Twisted Sage tools to do these focuses. I know that um, Slim's widow, she does something with the harmonizers, like once a month or on special occasions. Um, but no, I think it's a fantastic idea, John, to do collective focus. Uh, Diane, how does the silver quantum healer wands compare to the first ones? So, you know, really with these quantum healer wands, um, the silver and the copper are very similar still on these, but yet the, um, the twisted wire on these is the regeneration ring. And when we make the regeneration ring out of silver versus copper, it's just a cleaner, crisper, and a little bit higher vibrating field. So that's how I would describe it is it's just a little bit cleaner, crisper, and higher vibrating than the copper one, but not so much that it should dissuade you from choosing whether you like copper or silver more. Um, let's see, which would be the best for cleansing and activating crystals and other tools? Um, you know, just any ring. A golden fire ring is a fantastic one for, for cleansing and activating crystals. Um, truly, if you wanted to go the most phenomenal route, that would be the harmonic creation field trio in any size, um, you know, for, for working with crystals um, and other energy tools because within the trio you have the golden fire which is going to be doing the major clearing work you have the regeneration which is doing a higher connecting work with the higher consciousness of that crystal or whatever you're working with and then there is the 333 megahertz or the harmony depending on the size of rings that you get which is more of the grounding it into the physical so anyway these this trio um, for cleaning crystals and 
even the smaller harmonic field creation trio that we use as a water ring set, the small water ring set, you can still charge a large crystal with that just by simply having the whole crystal does not have to be within the field of the rings. So that's a pretty versatile set to use. Um, or you can actually, you know, you can get the home set of the water rings, the harmonic creation field trio, or the large practitioner size. Um, and then making grids to crystal grids, that's a phenomenal way to do it, is to um, use this as your broadcasting point um, to put your crystal in there because this really amplifies things. Uh, let's see. So Lynn, for an eight-year-old not going to school, what's the best tool for her at home? Golden fire generator um, would be what I would suggest. Um, anything that would cover the environment, it could be a quantum grid point. Um, it could be one of the other little pyramid structures um, because those will both hold a great space. And when you use a quantum grid point, you know, you can set it there with the intention of creating a space for learning, for whatever. So a quantum grid point is really a great way to go. Either that or any size of the golden fire generator. Um, because they will keep things clean and clear and in a high space. So, yeah, totally something for the environment. Generator or a grid point. Uh, so Jill's ask, uh, about the golden fire generator in 5G, can it stop a metal spring mattress from attracting 5G? So basically, when, when you have a golden fire generator, um, all the tensor fields and these golden fire fields are harmonizing. So we cannot see electromagnetics as being, we cannot judge them as really good or bad. They are, they are a part of our entire physical reality, electromagnetics are. It's just that some of these electromagnetic fields are non-beneficial. They're, they're chaotic, they, they, cause, they cause disruptions in our field. So all the tools are harmonizing tools, transforming tools. So yes, your steel spring bed, everything that comes into your home, if you have a golden fire generator, those, those 5G waves or in millimeter waves wouldn't get through your wall anyway. So it's just basically fifth generation cell phone towers. 5G millimeter waves won't go through a piece of paper. So you don't have to worry about millimeter waves hitting your bed, but just any 4G, 5G frequencies that go through everything and will hit your box spring, having a golden fire generator is gonna ensure that whatever comes in is harmonized. And so then your box spring isn't going to be a collector and amplifier of anything that's not beneficial. Um, can a 528 megahertz twisted copper tetrahedron pyramid with coil inside and molded bytes be hijacked? Well, I don't believe that you can make a 528 megahertz ring. Don't believe it. Um, you can't actually make rings to fit a frequency. Um, you can't do that. Um, so a 528 megahertz twisted copper tetrahedron pyramid with coil inside. Is it a tensor coil? Um, a tensor field, if it is a tensor field and a working tensor field, it will restructure um, electromagnetics. Can this structure be hijacked? If it's a coil we made, no, it cannot be hijacked. If this is somebody else's creation, and one, it's not connected to an authority template. Yes, it can be hijacked. Two, if it's connected to an authority template and they don't know they have an authority template, yes, it can be hijacked. Um, it won't be hijacked if there's an authority template and that authority template is known about, anchored in, and then it is guarded, protected, and untouchable. Um, so right now, Jill, it, it, it could be hijacked. Um, don't know. Um, yeah, I'd have to actually look more into it. It feels like there's a propensity for it to be, but I don't know as if it is right now. 
Um, what you can do is you can anchor a column of light into it. You can go in the heart space. You can put a bubble in there, expand that bubble out. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do to energetic clear it, but to keep it permanently energetic cleared, um, you know, again, if it is one of our coils, then it will stay energetically cleared. Um, but otherwise, I would suggest even adding a Wi-Fi ring to it because that's our cheapest, most economical ring, and it's a golden fire. And that can do a lot of great things with a lot of different tools. Um, John, in Montana anytime soon. <laughs> well, nothing scheduled yet, John, but yeah, I'd love to get to Montana sometime soon, especially before it gets too cold out. So um, I'm open to to being invited to speak someplace. So we're working on, I think we do have a web page for that so that if you're interested in, you know, hiring, hiring me to come hang out and do classes, workshops, um, we try to make that easy enough so that, um, you know, basically we just look for sponsors to do that. And not necessarily sponsors, just people to, to help with the, the process. Um, so usually I get my time away for free to do those types of things. I just need everything else paid for to get me there, all that fun stuff. So um, nothing in Montana. We do have, I guess, say, Wyoming, South Dakota, and Colorado all this month and next month. Well, you guys, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Um, it looks like that's all the questions here. And... You know, as far as doing the journey work anymore, we used to do journey work on, you know, at the end of the shows all the time. And, you know, really, I would love to just tell you guys to go back and check out the quantum heart activation that's on our YouTube that Brenda did a couple months ago. Phenomenal, phenomenal activation. Um, she walks you through basically uh, clearing programs that were instilled in the human since the beginning and then also clearing the beliefs that are associated with those programs and the traumas that are associated with those programs. And then she walks you through the quantum heart activation, which is a huge deal. So um, please do, you guys, if you haven't, or if you have, check it out again, the quantum heart activation by Brenda Schnoes. It's on our YouTube website. Um, Let's see, Lynn's asking, worn instruments heal the physical body. I don't understand your question, Lynn. Um, let's see. So, um, yeah, Lynn, if you can rewrite that question here real quick. Otherwise, we're going to jump off and be back again. Um, Gosh, October. Um, one of these days in October, we'll do a 50 Questions Friday again, probably that uh, first or second week in October. So I uh, really appreciate you guys being here all the time and the support. And we'll get going here this winter. We'll get going back on our usual 50 Question Fridays again. And um, until then, yeah, thank you guys very much for being here. And we will, um, oh shoot, okay. I gotta answer one more question that came up. Jill says, sellers of megahertz rings say it's the same method as Slim used to get frequencies by qubits for 528. No, Slim made the 144 megahertz, which came from the sacred qubit from the Pyramid of Giza. Then there was a 177 megahertz ring created by Slim's friend, um, who who is a astrophysicist, and um, yeah. So if somebody is making a ring and they say that it's actually a 528 megahertz and they use Slim's methods, um, Slim's methods was only to twist and create. Um, so Slim did not have a map of creating frequencies of rings. Nobody does. Um, there's, you know, and maybe someday there will be, but um, it's just that there's no correlations between a qubit measure and the frequency of ring.
but anymore. So that's another thing is that the old rings that were created, I'd say, in the old energy paradigm had a measurable frequency because they they had a certain bandwidth that they operated in. The golden fire and all these new ones, the bandwidths that they operate in are so huge and they're so multi-leveled and they're so conscious that they shift and change depending on what a person needs at any given moment and who it is that's holding on to it or in their field. So the frequencies within this ring could be a 528 megahertz. Maybe they're there for a moment. But the frequencies that come through this ring are varied. Um, and they're based on what the soul says that this physical needs. So um, I don't know. I don't want to tell you about 528 rings. I'd say be very cautious of tensor rings that you buy out there because not everybody understands the theory templates. People who have made energy tools, I've watched them through the years, they get hijacked. They, and then they, they're selling these things that are consciousness, stealing consciousness. I'm not talking about tensor rings. I'm talking about energy tools in general. Um, be very cautious of who you buy energy tools from. Um, be cautious for every, you know, all that stuff. I don't know. Go into the heart space, feel it out. And that's it too, is that, you know, really, truly, it doesn't matter. Whatever you are guided to is perfect for your journey. Um, I just like to feel like we're creating tools that are for no more game play and that we're here to help with the higher journey. Um, but really, whatever you're drawn to for energy tools, it's, you know, it's part of the journey. Um, can we use these to harmonize civil unrest? Beyond my perspective, to me, my perspective is civil unrest is a beautiful thing. Chaos is a beautiful thing. Yes, we need to shine light and harmonize this chaos as much as we can. But to me, it's like if we wiped chaos off the earth, nothing would change. Um, that you know that things are there for a reason to create change in this world and i feel that's really where we're at right now but you know brenda would say totally yeah shine your light on it try to harmonize it and make things smoother and easier because just because there's chaos and chaos is a factor of change doesn't mean that doesn't mean that that factor of change has to be hard you are very true on that that you know that even though that chaos that factor of change that energy is coming through it can still be done in a way that is um you know grace and ease for people so that's what i would say is is i would say not to harmonize the chaos but to harmonize the effects that it has on on everybody too i mean just add that in to it um Let's see. And Marie asks, have you worked with singing bowls and any of the tensor tools for healing and raising consciousness? Yes. As a matter of fact, we, um, we actually make a really cool set of rings. Well, we used to make. All right. Here's a couple of them that have been made from my own personal singing bowls. This was a set of three rings. And you see how old they are. They're dust falling off of them. And, and I think these were probably the galactic rings that we made for my singing bowl in the beginning. And then we made this set for, I think these ones were the harmony rings. And then we moved to the golden fire. So now then on uh, my big bowl back here, there's a set of three rings below that. And those are my personal rings. Um, so to give you a quick story, um, Marie, of what it was that we, we used these rings and singing bowls, is um, this bowl here. This bowl produces a, what is it? I think it's a green color of sound for those who can see the color of sound. It's green. And then when you put my set of three rings around it, this color of sound becomes purple. And then for those who can feel the energetics of a singing bowl, and then you put the ring around it, holy smokes, you can feel the shift. Um, so, and it doesn't have to be this fancy set of three rings that maybe someday we'll start custom making these again, because these were called soul rings. Basically, we channeled in the soul and 
all the other stuff that I've needed for doing sound healing work. We don't have these available right now. Maybe someday again. But for now, you can just get a golden fire ring or the um, the earth resonance ring is a 333 megahertz. The 333 megahertz are the ones that we were using for sound healing in the beginning because these do change the color of sound, um, 333. But then that whole thing was put into the energies and properties, frequencies and properties of the 333 was put into the harmony ring. So we started using the harmony ring to change the color of sound. Now you can find all of that in the golden fire ring. So you can use a golden fire ring with your sound. Um, not only does the tensor fields act as more of a carrier wave for those sounds to be more quantum, if you will, but it, they'll carry farther and it changes the whole energetic quality because the sound in that um, interfaces with the tensor field plus your consciousness of your crystal bowl is amplified. Consciousness of your crystal bowl can be amplified and help to come through too. Um, so anyway, um, the singing bowl, this bowl is a, I don't know, 2014 I had to drive all the way to Santa Fe just to buy this bowl and this is my first crystal bowl uh, and this is a 10 inch, it's an it's a heart chakra. Um, not sure the exact on the bowl. But um, anyway, sound healing, tensor fields. Yes, phenomenal, phenomenal way to go. Um, let's see, do you have a booklet to use with a pendulum? No, you know, Ethan, I was going to do... That's one of the projects that we have on the back burner is um, I'm going to make this plate this charging plate that has a dowsing chart on it and we're going to redo the bovis chart into a light chart how much light are you holding and um so we're going to create that whole thing at some point in time and then basically allow you to be able to connect your pendant to this shambhala space to basically change any little um change any uh, dowser into a connected pendulum um, so then you can use any pendulum um, so anyway yeah Ethan we're still working on that's a, one of our back burner projects is making the cool pendulum faces um, the singing bowl on the YouTube video now that is Brenda and her bowl holy smokes you guys Brenda's bowl is a phenomenal being i mean that's a healer right there um so yeah the brenda's bowl she has a large bowl um i i don't know the basics about it we do know that it has changed its uh its sound over the years um as it's grown itself so anyway fun stuff yeah i told you guys using sound with um with the tensor fields, amazing, amazing, amazing. That is something that has gone a little bit untapped that we really, really do need to get back into. Um, we're working on right now, well, we're considering right now creating another website that is going to be geared more towards, um, you know, working people for the heck of clasps, um, you know, make things not so woo woo. Um, you know, and just sell a few products on there and start gearing that towards, you know, farmers and ranchers. Because here in South Dakota, in our rural world, I mean, everybody loves the the copper clasps. I mean, everybody here wears them, but we just, um, nobody's into the woo-woo side of things. <laughs> so anyway, so we're going to do that. And, and the reason I bring that up is because that's a thought too, is that we also, um, create something geared specifically towards sound healing um, because it's just another really phenomenal untapped um, field that could really use um, space holders, tensor tools. It just, it, it amplifies everything that you do with sound healing. All right. So I think truly we're going to be done. I need to get to work. Um, 
<laughs> thank you guys for being here today. Um, okay, one more question, Marie. Any suggestions on, on Tibetan singing bowls and tensor tools? So, you know, if you're using the Tibetan gong bowls, like my friend, Dr. Dream, um, holy smokes, if you're going to ever get a Tibetan singing bowl, the, the brass bowl, then, yeah, these guys are the ones. So... I always get these really special ones from Mark Peebler, Dr. Dream. This one produces like a whole range of frequencies, so it does really cool things. Um, using these guys, though, the banging bowls is a little bit tougher because you just have to have a larger ring that you put around the entire bowl when you're using these. Um, so the, the singing, the Tibetan, and these are genuine yeah and all the all the metals the seven metals are all mined um and there's two villages in tibet that uh, mark peebler basically he hires two villages to make his bowls and he does this 333 singing bowl experience and travels the country and he's actually supposed to be showing up here <laughs> hopefully today um, to hang out with me while i'm around um so yeah i would suggest checking out dr dream mark peebler i don't know what his website is or if he has one but you can find him on social media or google and get one of his tibetan singing bowls otherwise if you're just looking for um you know a crystal bowl that one i can't tell you um that one you're just, you know, i had to sit a long time to to find the one that that we resonated with um all right, totally. This time for real, you guys. I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you again, everybody, for for being here, um, for the support, for the questions, for the support. Um, you know, we're we're very blessed here. We have, you know, if you guys have seen, I don't know if it's been posted yet, but we took a picture the other day of everybody at the studio. Not a very good picture, mind you, because I was in charge of organizing how everybody stood, and I, yeah, I shouldn't have been. But um, you'll see everybody that works there, and um, we're all in deep gratitude for every one of you who, who we make tools for. Um, thank you guys for using them and doing the work and shifting yourself and shifting the world. And... Um, yeah, I have high hopes about this world. I really do. So thank you guys for, for being a part of that. All right. Take care. See you next time.